this is cause for this is cause for concern. I don't think I've ever ever considered it possible for Ren to actually physically draw a smiley face. I'm screaming internally, but I did it because I love you guys. Yeah, I was like expecting you to like <laughs> seize up and like have a heart attack or something. <laughs> And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, um, you ever think a progress bar would make a good game? Someone did. We're going to talk about that in NTFS, Steam and Linux. What could they possibly have in common? The Valve Index gets a release date. Prepare your throat. And Aspire is bringing Borderlands to HB HD Texture Pack. Eventually. The EU has an objection. Valve and some publishers have been put on notice, and all the 1650 leaks seem to be running dry, so it's time to spool up the conjecture mill. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm <laughs> Old Man Ben, that is uh, Jordan Waterbottle's thing, I'm in his fancy shelf, and one Pedro Mateus. Uh, Hello. And to give him <laughs> you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Ultron. What's going on, lads? What have you been up to? Anything fun? Anything exciting? Uh... Jordan. I found my, uh, I found my controller. Uh -oh. It's not stolen. Uh -oh. <laughs> Man, so you mean uh, Frenchie's going to have to quit shaking people down? He's like, who's got the controller? No, Frenchie, <laughs> you should still keep shaking people down. Whoa. <laughs> Rem remember, the deal is we keep half the cash in the wallet so we find. So, um, yeah, no, I, I, found, I found that in the suitcase. Um, it was in a pocket that I never usually check. Uh, no, I helped someone move today, so that, that was fun. Um... And yeah, every, everything's signed and done. So in a couple weeks, I'll be taking possession of my brand new apartment. And Sweet. then there's going to be a host of new problems that'll come up and we'll spend <laughs> about four weeks <laughs> sorting through them all. Right. That's how we do. Oh, man, I hope it's smooth for you. Moving sucks. It does. 100%. Yeah, I, I, I hope it's smooth as well. Pedro, you, you, you got one toy that's kind of useful and something that is not. <laughs> well, let's start with the one that's not, which is this uh, teeny tiny PCM CIA weird looking mouse. It's Bluetooth. You just keep it, it in fit. the PCM CIA slot of a laptop and you got a mouse always with you. But the other one is a USB 3 HDMI capture card with the 1080p 60 FPS, which is, you know, uh, not entirely sure what I'm uh, going to do with it, but I do know that I need at least one more HDMI cable because <laughs> uh, this arrived and I'm like, ooh, neat, I get to try it out. So it's like, okay, where are the HDMI cables? We ran through all my drawers, all the drawers under the TV. It's like, oh, I don't have one. Okay, I guess I need to buy an HDMI cable now. <laughs> Oh man, I, I look forward to whatever shenanigans you could hold to, and I respect the mentality required to buy something without having any idea what you're gonna do with it. It's like a dog chasing a car. <laughs> I know I, I I knew for a while I wanted one of those, but yeah, it's like oh okay, thirty pounds on eBay, neat. Give me <laughs> right on, right on. Um, not much over here. I researched uh, for the workstation. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll do this water cooling thing I haven't done in twenty years. Uh uh. That's expensive, like way too expensive, even on like parting it out. We're not talking about an AIO. That's not going to happen. So, uh, sorry, you don't get that video. Womp womp. But one thing about the show I do want to bring up, this show and Wednesdays now have this magic technology called timestamps. So <laughs> if you don't want to, it's like, man, when are they going to get around to talking about whatever that was in the description? Just look in the uh, description it'll tell you when that's going to happen and they're mostly accurate which i think is more than we can say for the horse yeah the the the, the horse seems to have been uh it put some pages up online and then it quickly retracted them we're gonna investigate that it's the steam and well, if you're in the EU and you are a purchaser of video games, chances are you like to get a good price, mostly because you really don't like being shafted with the uh, direct translation from dollars to euros. But, well, uh, the European Commission is demanding that Valve stop geoblocking games inside the EU. Like, specifically, if you're getting a particular uh, game and you want to shop around for the best price, 
you should be able to do that. That is the European's commission stance anyway. But Valve and um, Bandai Namco, Capcom, Focus Home, Cockpedia, and Zenimax are have all been put on notice because they do not allow this. In fact, they seem to be encouraging geo-blocking certain specific keys and uh, stores for games if you're in specific countries and not allowing anyone else to get that particular price. We've also seen that in the past with stuff like Spotify, where they will, if you have a lower income country, they will lower their prices and they will stop anyone outside that country from actually... uh, getting that stuff at that cheap price. That's kind of anyway. the way I'm thinking about it. Am I crazy when I say it? It's like, listen, you, you can have region blocking or region pricing. I think you got to pick one on that. Or... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, so this all comes out of, like, this whole desire for the EU to have, like, a single market, a uh, single digital marketplace. But the problem is when you have, like, a, like Pedro mentioned, when you have a lot of constituent countries that have varying levels of uh, economy and, you know, where 50 euros in one country is not necessarily the same as 50 euros in another country in terms of what you can actually buy. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're there, there, there needs, there needs to be some sort of system in place to either allow people to adjust for it or everyone either has to deal with much higher or much lower prices and companies aren't going to lower prices. They don't want to do that. They're going to raise prices and then it's just going to be more expensive for people in these areas. Right. Well, so here's another thing I was, you, you'll often see this is like, if you're buying a key for a game, that is from like third party site like Green Man Gaming or something like that. You can buy a region key. That's only going to work mm-hmm. in that region, but there's also a such something called a global key. Yep. Which is usually based on USD. I mean, I firmly believe Canada should have regional pricing because their currency is like it's off kilter. Yeah. yeah. And it's it is a very good uh very pro consumer move, but on the heels of Article 13 and that whole charade, this is just going to be marred by that particular bad smell. And it's despite being a good thing, people are just going to look at this like, eh, they're doing more shit again to dick us over. I, oh, great. I'm, 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 I'm just curious on what Pedro thinks the word charade means. So it's a drink. <laughs> <laughs> pour, pour, pour an ice cold glass of charade. It's a delicious. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice all, all, right. Charade. all right. Speak, speaking of uh, Steam. All right. So this is from SteamDB.info. Uh, so uh, apparently there were some. This is a blog post from. Uh, apparently there were some pages that came up for um, the purchasing options for the new Valve Index blah, VR headset that had um, the uh, that had the base stations. Uh, and the headset, the controller separately, um, or some combination. You can you can read the article. Uh, but they're saying, um, but the 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 main thing here was uh, that twenty uh, June fifteenth supposedly was going to be the ship date. Um, one thing that the article does not mention, though, if you scroll and actually look at the screenshots, this thing does have uh, Linux system requirements. Uh, we don't get to see what they are, but they're listed on these uh, empty store pages full of lorem ipsum placeholder text. So well, that's the that's the thing. We're gonna get support. Makes sense given all those Linux VR updates that we've been getting in the Steam client. It yeah, according to the Steam DB page, the last release date on the uh like the headset itself was about uh what was it, June thirtieth? And the um I do like the what the little screenshots that they show, there was like, ooh, Linux system requirements. They don't actually show them, but it, yeah, they, they were there, so that's good to see. The 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 one thing we we got to ask though is like, this isn't an official Valve release date by any means because no. this is just uh, no. the, these pages went live <laughs> and then were taken down very very quickly. Um, but I mean, we we did we have seen Valve meet their release date one time with with Artifact, and you know how that all that went out, well. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> listen, maybe may, maybe Valve time exists for a reason. Maybe maybe they should take their time and not rush shit. Fully consider their options. I I'm shocked, but it's good that they're going through with it. It looks like they're going to be doing their own hardware. So. And this has to get done until we get to an, something that's actually viable for a VR headset. You know, it's not something with wires hanging off of it and knuckles, mm-hmm. controllers, and smashing into walls. Or TVs. 
That, that's yeah. the big one. Yeah, there is. That. <laughs> there is. That. Or, or, or like accidentally <laughs> kicking your computer because there's a zombie in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we need. Feet tracking. You hear me, Vov? Oh, yeah. Full, full body tracking, man. That, that's where you, it's man. going. But they're right next uh, to the heat sinks. Uh, eventually, it's going to be like the hollow shit from Futurama where you can accidentally get people pregnant. <laughs> Also, an episode of Enterprise update to workshop submission processes. Yes. So, uh, this is from the CSGO uh, blog. Basically, uh, if you're going to be submitting uh, workshop items, the very first one that you do you submit will have a email verification wait. Um, so this is to uh, this is to ensure that your account has not been compromised and being is being used to sell bogus items. Because apparently, this is a thing that's been happening. Uh, uh, scammers are sending out phishing links. People click on them, they get their Steam account hijacked, and then people use them to upload their scam shit. Um, link it to an account that they make money off of. Uh, so. I, I wasn't aware this was really a concern, but there there it is. Uh, and yeah, that, and here's the thing. Um, a lot of people don't use uh, two-factor authentication and reuse passwords, though. So the odds are, if you fell victim to this, your Steam password and your email password are very likely the same thing. And so your email account is at risk. And these guys have access to what your email account is. So... I don't I don't know how good a solution this actually is, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. I mean, they already force people to have the mobile authenticator thing going, so why not just pop up another notification on your phone? It's like, look, you're about to do this. Are you sure? But I I don't know, I guess triple factor authentication for the secondary Steam market, you know, the one that Valve profits off of. Yeah, maybe that's not such a bad idea. And I like the little uh, quote that they have. In the past, our moderation team would review workshop items reported by players. Yeah, we're trying to get rid of those people too now. So yeah, you get an email. We should point out that this also affects Dota 2. I don't, I've never bought or (laughs) traded anything on Steam outside of just buying a game, so... I usually sell the cards. <laughs> it's the only experience I've had with that, and this is legit. Somebody's like, so are you going to do anything with those cards? Nope. Then can I have them? Nope. No. <laughs> what part of doing nothing? Right. That, that would invalidate my doing nothing with it. Plus, I didn't want yeah. to. Like, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Proton 422 came Proton. out this week. And it's oh, magic. Yeah. It fixes so, everything. Everything runs at 11D and no more worries. You don't need Windows. Eh, no, anymore. no. Nope. It's, uh, it actually looks like a just a roll up release to catch up to F audio and uh, restore some functionality that they previously uh, had, which was the .NET installers, which now work again. Uh, but it doesn't particularly fix the issue that Paladin still has. More on that at 11. Uh, the. But they also corrected some command line parameters for some games and fixed games failing or crashing in certain locales, which is good. Uh, they um, mentioned Turkish specifically, but I've seen some games do that with a Portuguese locale when you have that set on your particular Linux install. So don't, yes. don't use Portuguese. <laughs> That's the moral of the story is it's a dying language. No um, yeah, I mean, there's the... You're a dying the, language. I am. Nobody speaks Jordan anymore. I, I apologize. That was the laziest damn insult I've heard in a minute. I know, right? That's Jordan um, level. Yeah, yeah I, I, I put a little bit. Of, I put a little bit more effort into mine. Uh, but yeah, this this comes quite off uh, quite quickly off the heels of um, the last Proton release. This is just a bug fix. Um, it's it's good to see that they're shoring stuff up, and it's good to see that we're going to get rapid releases to sort of address issues as they arise. Mm-hmm. Um, but what will it mean for all those Windows games that I have installed on my NTFS hard drives? Oh boy, you got you got to watch <laughs> out for that because there is a new client beta and it's out. And really, the only thing for Linux is it improves support for Steam library on NTFS mounts. Giggity. Something of DirectX input Windows stuff like that and fixed an issue with P2P connections sending out too many keep alives. Idle connections. Uh, here's the thing, Brad. You got to throw this out there. Is this because, like, Proton being a thing? Or maybe the streaming thing and maybe you have a NAS with NTFS? Because I really don't know why NTFS would be on a network, why it would exist, and 
you know, if, if, if you have it on your local box, you're just a damaged individual. So I, I so I, I, I have a use case and this is, this is a, this is a highly specific one. Uh, back when, back when I was dual booting windows on a laptop, uh, this was a machine with only one drive, right? So I, I had partitioned it out and I had a NTFS partition that I used for data for both the Linux and windows partition just because, and I use symbolic links to link stuff from the home folder just so that I, just because I wanted to get around that whole, oh, if you're using fat 32 or whatever, you can't have files larger than four gigs. I didn't want to have to deal with that, especially when I had to deal with a lot of ISO files for like DB installs for classes and whatnot. Um, so I, I can see where having, where that would fix things, I guess. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I get, I guess it's just making sure that shit works with the fuse NTFS driver. Uh, it's actually the dual booting heathens, because if you've been reading, uh, Neon Genesis, Jason Evangelio's, um, posts about Linux gaming, he does have a, like, an NTFS drive with a bunch of games that he shares between Windows and Linux. And, well, I guess the, uh, filthy dual booting heathen market is significant enough that Valve is willing to throw a little bit of support at the uh, share drive, so to speak. Why don't uh, they, they support also... XFS? <laughs> or ZFS, for that matter. Right. But uh, it's... Uh, no, they also... One of the new things that came out was uh, the allowing of uh, blacklists and duplicates. Uh, duplicates and false positives, because sometimes keyboards, if they have a little analog controller, they'll show up as a game controller. Some uh, mice also do that. And some controllers, especially those that you run through an adapter, like the case of my Saturn controller, will show up as two devices, despite being just the one plugged in. So that's that's very useful to have. <laughs> you know, what I really want to give you static about that PC my CIE mouse and you're like no my saturn adapter I'm like that's even worse man. i'm not even gonna touch that <laughs> um i right and i do believe rightfully so have no desire to write to an ntfs volume because very legitimate reasons in the past it's like oh do, do you want to destroy that yeah right to it so one fs 3g well, isn't that bad anymore <laughs> that yeah, bad what, what, not what, words what, i like to hear with a file yeah. system in the same what, 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 once once upon a time but i think honestly i think as of like maybe 2010 they had solved that issue so mm. that's yeah. nice that's nice. yeah let's talk about dollar bills why valve actually gets less than 30 percent steam games this is a really long article to explain a very easy thing you can generate keys as a developer, as a publisher. You can put in a request, spool up how many you need. I don't know, 3,000. And Valve's like, here you go. What do I got to pay for that, Valve? Nada. Go sell them. And you don't get a cut for it. Well, Valve doesn't get a cut for it. And um, a lot of people don't bring that up when they're talking about, uh, you know, Valve taking its 30, what is it, 30%, 40%? 30%. Yeah. Yeah. And that's definitely a thing. Uh, yeah, 30%. What do you thought, Sir Pedro? Yeah, it's Valve, uh, to be fair, Valve did limit the um, the amount of keys that you could generate when they were trying to combat the bot farms that were basically redeeming game keys that were offered for free and just generating the cards and then selling those on the market. And that's basically how uh, the those schemes ended up getting all the profit. But in order to combat that, they limited the amount of keys that... Uh, developer could generate based on actual sales within the steam store so if you haven't made any sales at all in the steam store you can only generate can't remember how many keys it were but it's like five thousand or something and then from then on as you hit certain milestones you can uh generate more but considering the amount of keys that people get from humble bundles uh sites like green man gaming or instant gaming or any of GTA the less or, reputable ones yeah. yeah uh i'm sure that 30 percent on the on store sales for steam is just about enough to cover what they miss out on with all of those generated and stolen keys so even generated yeah. and stolen there are limitations though i mean we can't i mean you can leave a review with a key yes. that you've purchased from like a humble or something like that, but it doesn't yeah. count. 
Yeah, it yeah. doesn't count to the little score thingy. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. This kind of reminds me of a, a talk that the train simulator guys did a couple of years ago to GC about how like they're essentially enabled to do business through Steam. And I think like this is this is one of those things where like if Steam is allowing you to sort of piggyback off their service to sell copies of your games because ultimately what that does is it draws more people into using Steam so that they'll actually buy games. Um and again, we we've, we've talked that length about, you know, that 30% cut going through going to a lot of value add including like Steam sockets and Steam input Proton. And, <laughs> pro, yeah. All 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 that good shit. So all the happy Linuxy feel good shit, but on the topic yeah. of reviews, man, and shit they got bombed this week. <laughs> oh yeah. In the what the fucking Borderlands HD texture pack. Borderlands, yes. man, I got review bombed. <laughs> <laughs> did it actually hard it was the first test of the uh new system that valve put in place a couple of months back or a few weeks back ah, so well. yeah when they found out it was going to be a epic store exclusive everyone like did the thing you know oh mm -hmm. okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. so let, 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 let's let's review bomb an entirely unrelated game that makes sense anyways um there was it was announced last week that um there's going to be a HD U, or a UHD texture pack coming to Borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel to make everything look all very nice and shiny at UHD which it already kind of does and it runs perfectly fine at UHD under Linux. <laughs> um so people people went to Aspire the people who ported uh Borderlands uh 2 and pre-sequel to Linux and said, "Hey man, are we getting those cuz it's just a texture pack." Apparently it's not just a texture pack. They do they added a bunch of post-processing options so this will actually require development because that was, that was sort of like my, my the real question i had at the beginning was why 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 would an hd texture pack need additional development it's it's the texture pack you just push that out and it wraps around the, the models right that that's how mm -hmm. textures work um but apparently apparently there's more crap uh it's good timing too because we just finished borderlands 2 on thursday stream so <laughs> you should look forward to it now you, you can just go walk right back into it now we gotta play it with hd texture packs it did yeah. kind of seem that Aspire was like, what? Oh, it, yeah, I, I, we, we could probably do that. Uh, let's go take a look. Let's go check. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. It's like no one told us that this was coming. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's good on them, too, because like Aspire doesn't want to write code anymore. They're publishers. That's what I'm saying. I felt like yeah. somebody had like, he's like, hang on a minute. Do we still do gay? Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK, yeah, we, we can still do that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, there's a here? bunch of anti-aliasing and uh, some new filters and some new stuff besides the texture. So, yeah, I guess it will take a bit longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, some dictator. Oh, yes. Tropical 6. Uh, we talked a lot about Tropical 5, tangentially speaking, because uh, Victor Vran ran on the Tropical 5 engine. But this, well, this is made by someone completely different. It's still being uh, published by Calypso Media, but it is being developed by, or, or was developed Limbic. by Limbic Entertainment. Yeah. So... Yeah, it came out on March 29th. It goes for 40 pounds over here. Uh, unless you want the El President edition, which is 45 pounds. <laughs> uh, that's uh, 50 bucks and uh, 55 bucks if you're in the US, apparently. Uh, yeah, so basically it is... Yeah, it's Tropico. If you've played Tropico before, if you like the satire type of situation with the city management style... Tropico's your jam. That's exactly what you're looking for. It's, uh, yeah, no, I, when I saw the announcement, it's just like, ooh, is it Hamamont? Do we get Victor Vran 2 with the new engine? No. Okay. <laughs> Od odds are, this is actually probably using the Tropico 5 engine, anyways, so. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that caught me in that video was the, like, NASA shuttle taking off, and I was like, oh, it's not good. <laughs> I can't You're supposed have some to play the game like watching, you know, bird's eye view type of situation. What's the deal, though? I mean, I never get into Sim Dictator. Is it like Sim City, but with more Dictator? I guess. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's got some satire aspects. Uh, basically, you have the, you know, the tyranny o meter. I, it's not called that, but it's basically what it is. And the it is a resource. I'm wondering where I left that thing. <laughs> the turinometer. <laughs> it's basically one of the resources you have to manage is how oppressed people are and how you can manage that situation. There was another game that also did that. It was a uh, democracy. 
the Democracy series, mm. which is also on Linux. Uh, except this one is, yeah, it's a tropical island that you have to basically um, manage. <laughs> hey, good on them for putting it on Linux, man. I mean, it's always yes. like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I just got a pop up on the on the web page. Apparently, someone is streaming Tropico. Oh, yeah. tro the Tropico the, the, people the, are streaming the, the Tropico. Right I now. saw yeah. that. I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> yeah. go away. Quit doing that, yeah. Valve. Um, <laughs> All right. Progress Bar Simulator. This is a thing. Why not? We had to put this in here because why not? Uh, ever wanted to <laughs> accelerate the progress bar if you download? Slow installation, Windows update, or just kill some time until something else is finished? No. But they made a game about it anyway. Is this even game. a game so much as a setback? A, 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 adjustable progress bar. That's Pretty what much. it is. Uh, that's all I mean, it simulates play alone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Party game <laughs> team. <laughs> it's, it's currently on sale. It's 84 cents, man. I don't know. I, 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 I have a feeling maybe this is the Frog Fractions version of Brick Simulator 2. Maybe, maybe. I mean, if you uh, want to look at but the different oh, uh, operating system progress bars, I guess you can. I, I mean, they have a curses one. That's nice. Yeah, they have the curses one that's configuring APT. They have the uh, OS two one, Apple two, and the Windows one, Six Apple times. two. Yes, I think that I think the last time I saw this one was actually in like a CentOS five install. The <laughs> That, that particular curse uh, it's still star. oh man that's it's still the default yeah, if you 100%. install crunch bank plus plus <laughs> or oh, oh <laughs> no suze suze yes oh really yeah yeah huh. <laughs> yeah all right i, I know buy this put it full screen fuck with somebody <laughs> oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, all right you know so, what hang on hang on all right <laughs> it might be useful to have to keep people away from your shit Oh yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't, yeah, don't touch that until the loading screen finishes. Right, just, especially if you're in a work environment. Like, just keep this loaded. Like, stay off my business, man. Yeah, <laughs> seems legit. All right, uh, all right. Much to the surprise of no one, Epic Tim Tim, Tim, Tim Sweetie. We can like, about it. Oh yeah, the unepic watch. So, uh, quote uh, from Tim Sweeney says. They are open to continuing signing exclusives for the Epic Store because you know why wouldn't they, right? If they can, if they can get, if they can manufacture a captive audience like you know Valve did with us Linux users, um, they can mm -hmm. they can be like, hey, you 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 you, you want to play some of that Borderlands three? Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta come over to our store and spend some money. Um, and yeah, th there's there's been uh, discussion out the wazoo about this and how about how this is really targeted more at publishers because the developers really just want to get their game in the hands of as many people as possible and are okay with putting them on all the various stores. Publishers are like, no man, you're gonna pay us for you're gonna reimburse us mm -hmm. for all the money we're dumping into this game development, right? We it's a business. We got to think about that, Ben. Uh, Maddie, I agree with you. I mean, as long as that Fortnite cash, this is mm -hmm. a very unfortunate situation all right something i thought about earlier today like we were talking about the review bombing and we're talking about publishers you know and developers valve make a system where people can review publishers and developers then boom there goes your review bomb done that'll fix that problem <laughs> call me but some, with, some sort of no i mean seriously if you're pissed off at a publisher if you're pissed yeah. off at a developer maybe they have a game on steam and sweeney walks in there and drops some of the sweeney bucks on them and they're like oh okay we're just going to close our steam thing and it's going to come out in six months on steam borderlands three and i get it man i get it but you know i'm not even angry about borderlands three like it's going to be six months if we get a linux port in six months we're like that early uh, yeah 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 you, you usually, usually the delta is about two to three years right so. uh yeah, a co-worker Dave actually brought up a good point. It's like, oh yeah, so Epic is signing up exclusives for like a year for all the games, and it usually takes about a year for them to patch the crappy state that games release uh, in nowadays. So basically, everyone in the Epic store is getting the shit version that's basically a beta test, a paid beta test. So maybe it's not a bad thing that all of the crappy games are being released in one place. That's not Steam. <laughs> They're not even the crappy <laughs> games. That's what people are getting angry at. And you know what? It's up to you at home. Vote with your fucking wallets, you know? I mean, if you are a filthy dual-booting heathen, or if you're a Windows user that's Linux curious, and you're like, I have to... This is not even an option for us. 
But yeah, we're 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 stuck on Steam. That's it. Right. Mm-hmm. But hate it or hate it slightly less. Epic has forced Valve to actually do something for the first time in the history of Valve being Monopoly. Mm, the, the, yeah. <laughs> the lumbering machine is having to move and try to figure out how to be a company again and do customer things. So I don't like the way Epic's going about it and Sweeney's just a dick, but hopefully yeah, the I'm end of this experiment rolls out and everyone benefits. Maybe. I don't know. I'm optimistic. You know, that's what they call it. Uh, I'm 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 less so because you see we as the educated masses can bitch and complain, but it's really the children. The children are who to blame because they go to their parents and say, "Mommy, mommy, I want to spend fifty bucks on Fortnite," or "Mommy, mommy, I want Borderlands 3. and they'll go to the whatever store. They'll they'll go to Google and they'll type in where to buy this. I think you can roll it back it. further than that. They can. Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Um, I need a computer. All my friends are playing <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> This Xbox shit's not cutting it all of a sudden, and I want to play with my friends. Can I get a computer? Then, like, how do I get the Fortnite? Oh, I download this. Oh, look, this is how I buy the computer game. Mm-hmm. This is how this is how I am by computer. <laughs> yes. Kids playing Fortnite. It, it, it is an economy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Well, coming up next, we talk about how the PC gamer is just spinning the wheel of booga booga. And it's time for some news, but not before we get to, you know, thank you, everyone out there who is helping us, you know, basically come on the internet and say swear words all the time, because for some reason, people think that's a good idea. I mean, not on Wednesdays, <laughs> but chilling time is begin <laughs> oh, now. Oh, oh, oh shots <laughs> fired. <laughs> <laughs> Go to LinuxGameCast.com, click the support button. We got so many other links for you to click on there that will allow you to give us money in various denominations maybe even bitcoin if you're one of those people who still buys into bitcoin Woo-hoo. um but the best way to support us of course is to head on over to patreon.com slash the next cast getting to uh was it 122 you giving us uh, 288 bucks a week to fund this nightmare fuel gets you cool stuff like access to the discord channel show note access you get your name in the credits uh you can even show up on live streams because we're doing more long form co-op stuff on uh, thursdays and fridays so Indeed. do you want to play games with us uh, that's a that's a great way to find get yourself a reservation. We also have a store. Uh, wait, if you want to wait, wait, wait. Uh, don't, oh, don't oh, short oh. sell us, man. I made a little thing. Uh, the oh. adventures, Jordan, Empty, uh, Matthew, Jill, everyone else. They went to scale, and there was a bunch of like B real footage of just behind the scenes them setting up things. So I smashed all that together, and I put that up to patrons. If you want to go check out that nonsense, also some ca- come say hi in the Discord, man. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. And access to the previous super shows, but. Not to get in the way of your shameless, shameless shilling. I know, right? Uh, and speaking speaking of shame, you got to cover yours by buying some hot, hot Linux Gamecast merch. We need to start selling booty shorts, Ben. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> LG, LGC booty shorts coming summer 2019. Um, but for now, you can get yourself a Hellox t-shirt, a Frank file shirt. You joke about uh, that, but they've already off. We have options for all over prints. I know. It's terrifying. I, I, I want the LGC bodysuit. <laughs> the LGC Zentai. Yeah. The onesie? Yeah. It, it's just the horse. <laughs> I want the Frank underwear. <laughs> yeah. A, a Frank thong. All right. Yeah. Speaking, spe- speaking of Frank, we have an Amazon wish list that, in it, you know, you know, make, making all this shit isn't easy. It requires quite a bit of computing resources. And if you want to help out with that, Say so you got 500 bucks to blow on a video card. Everything but the video supply. card. That's not for the studio. That's just something I want. Sure. <laughs> if, if you if you want to be Ben Sugar Daddy, you can head there on over go. to our Amazon wish list. You can get that through the support the show page on the main site. Uh, and if you send us something, you can uh, you can also send us a little note, which we will read on the air. And then you get to go up on Frank's fuck wall. You can be one of his fuck buddies. Um, I think we're gonna need a new fuck wall though, because we're running a little bit low on space, ain't that right, man? We got we got oh. one more person we gotta add. I'm making oh whoa man, I almost tucked out the keyboard tray. <sighs> Don't be careful, you might tear a bicep or something. <laughs> I've, I've been on record on multiple occasions saying that anything over a thousand watts is ridiculous and unnecessary for power supply. Right? Yes. That's about right. That that's horseshit. I've said thousand watt power supplies are ridiculous. Sure. Until you start building a thread rope. 
<laughs> like, oh shit, I need dual EPS connectors. Fuck. That's going to be a thing. Apple is not going to have any of it. So he hooked us up with, where's the shot again? There it is. Urgh! Glacia. So heavy. 1000 watts power. So this is, this is Roswell. Uh, <laughs> Roswell, man. It's going to get it done. So I could have put him up in the funk wall. Yeah. You're going to do that now? I'm going to do that right now. Try, try to see if you can feel some air. Yeah. It's, oh, it's, yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> Roswell, that ends well. Am I right? Um, <laughs> uh, that I, was really bad. <laughs> I, I, I know. I just ripped off a Futurama episode title. That's, that's even better. Ha. <laughs> I, highly available. Highly available uh, PLO. PLO. Actually, no, we don't. We don't. We don't want the highly available PLO. That's a bad thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think we got room for maybe one more. One more person on the fuck wall. Um, or, hey, uh, smiley face. <laughs> yeah. I. You know what? Th th this this is cause for this is cause for concern. I don't think I've ever ever considered it possible for Ren to actually physically draw a smiley face. I'm screaming internally but i did it because i love you guys yeah i was like expecting you to like seize up and like have a heart attack or something I, my, my hands frozen like this is enraged yes so you too can give in the claw by buying stuff no. off our wish zone all right we, uh, we, seriously we, thanks for that though that is uh yeah. like the first piece that is the fuck it now we gotta do it kind of like when uh maddie picked us up the 600 for a uh, rising box and i was like shit all right it's real now god damn it yeah. all right it's beautiful Thank you, everyone, it's for beautiful. enabling our dog and pony nonsense. That's awesome. Now, let's try to spend some of their money. Oh, well, yes. we, 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 so, we could do it on uh, a sixteen fifty. We could at some point in the future, but not right now, because right now all we have are rumors. And well, Nvidia did say that there would be a sixteen fifty, but PC Gamer got a little bored of not getting any more news out, so they decided to collate everything that uh, has been. "Quote unquote." Sorry, leaked. sorry, sorry. What, what, what was that word you said? Collate. 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 Yes. Collate. Collate. <laughs> uh, everything into a, I guess, speculative article, and they basically they speculate that it could be a TU one hundred and sixteen GPU, or it could be a TU one hundred and seven, or a TU one hundred and seventeen. Uh, they it is far more likely that it will be a one hundred and sixteen, given that both the sixteen sixty and the sixteen sixty Ti are also running on that one, so it would make more sense. And it really doesn't make sense for Nvidia to create another SKU for just the um, sixteen fifty. But it, it, it is, they say that it will be, well, they're speculating that it will be around 20% faster than the 1050 Ti. And if you have something that's faster than the 1050 Ti and it's fully PCIe power like the 1050 Ti is, that would be a very good proposition if the price also matches the 1050 Ti. Uh, the price however, yeah, that, wrong, bitch. <laughs> Shut up, Bob Parker. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I think everyone's kind of hoping that the there's like a low profile or PCIe powered SKU for this because that, that's that's a really handy upgrade for a lot of uh, budget systems that are out there. I definitely like uh, one of those for an upgrade to the Steam Box, even though it really needs a yep. more, newer CPU more than anything. <laughs> um, that ancient that ancient AMD APU is like it's it's doing its best. But but some sometimes men. Um, but yeah, this is this is very much a spinning the wheel of booga booga, right? Like there's no actual concrete information. This is all we think based on previous releases, right. blah blah blah. So take it with a big old, big old chunk of rock salt here. Um on, on, honestly, like I'm I'm curious once it once it gets into the hands of guys like Tom's hardware or non-tech, we actually start seeing them like run tests that are all gonna be direct X, by the way. We're not gonna see anything on the Vulcan performance. I know. Uh, we'll get some idea about <laughs> how it how it actually stacks up. But I definitely gotta agree with you though. I mean, unless this thing is half hike and PCIe power and people are just they're gonna be hangry. One hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you look at prices right now, the short bus edition of the 1060 with only three gigs of RAM, they're going for pretty cheap on eBay right now. And if the 10, uh, the 1650 comes out and it doesn't do like the encoding bits, which it supposedly won't do, uh, like the 1660 does, and it the price is completely off 
of what it should be. Uh, yeah, between that and the, the between this and even the uh, 1060 with only three gigabytes, I know which one I'm getting for Nori's PCs. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like that that's the thing too. Like if if it if the SKU ship, ships with the encoder and it's at that 150 dollar price point. Every streamer and their uncle is going to try and grab one. That's going to be a it very won't. popular yeah. card. They don't do the 50 series with encoders because that would make too much sense. And NVIDIA is not good at that. If you're going to speculate about this, sit back and continue speculating while you're waiting on Navi. Then get your speculation together. and Computex. Right. Computex. Let's see how spin, that Spin that wheel of bugga bugga. <laughs> All right. DXVK. The XVK has a new version, very teeny tiny release notes. Basically, they fixed the GPU hang in 720p and 1440p resolutions in Path of Exile. Final Fantasy XIV has, uh, they fixed a potential hang when changing display modes, and they were uh, created a black screen workaround for Neo and uh, Dissidia, the free to play a version that's currently out on steam now on my end i didn't get a black steam in the city a uh, black screen in the city uh, as much as i got a white one very very white uh, <laughs> uh, so oh, oh, okay so here, here here's the here's the fun thing about dxvk releases by the time we actually talk about them on the show a new version has been released I and 10 hours say ago the fun thing about well, pedro annihilating the english language no, yes. that, that that's, just, that's been a, that's been a recurring joke for five years, man. Five years. Uh, but I actually, know, but, but he's like Goku, man. He finds new models. Yeah, and this is to go one level further beyond. Anyways, about ten hours ago, uh, they actually released uh, DXVK version one dot one, which has some fixes for Unreal Engine four games. Makes use of the VKEXT host query reset uh, extension that comes in some of the newer um, newer uh, drivers for Vulkan. Um, and has some uh, performance fixes for uh, Dark Souls Remastered, Grim Dawn, and Sekido Shadows Die Twice. Um, mm-hmm. We're not we're not going to talk about too, that too in depth because it got added today. Um, but if you if you're if you're rushing to download or compile version one point <laughs> two, maybe maybe bump to version one point one because yeah, that's the newest one point one is a much better proposition. <laughs> and I'll hastily be waiting on whatever Steam dumps out in Proton because that's about as much as I care about playing Windows games. Pretty much. Pretty much. Speak, speaking of Unreal Engine, there's a brand new update. Unreal Engine 4.2. Not 2.2. Jeez, 422. I told you, Pedro, it's contagious. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Listen, I, I just have to stop myself from saying 420 because then I just want to smoke weed. Um, And I got I to wait till the end of the show to do that. Anyways, um, so we play the, we play, every time there's a new Unreal Engine 4 release, we play the Control F Linux game and... All we get is that if you're going to be building uh, Unreal Engine 4 games on under Windows for Linux, they upgraded to a ver- newer version of C-Lang. Um, yeah, that, that that's that's it. Also, also uh, we're probably not going to see this uh, make it to Linux for some time, but they have enabled uh, the real-time ray tracing shit, so uh, you can RTX on with the Unreal Engine 4 stock version. So hmm. that's definitely a thing. I mean, we might see it if it works in Proton. Listen, man, they got to get the uh, Linux fixes <laughs> together for the Fortnite release, right? Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. Could, could you Im- could you imagine how quickly would we be turning around? It's like, okay, we finally released Fortnite under Linux. Th- this is what I would say. This would confuse my hate boner for Epic if they're like, here, because what was it, like two weeks ago in the store, they were like, oh, an RSDK that we're going to be rolling out uh, mm-hmm. will support Linux. I mean, it said it on the page. I didn't think they were physically capable of like typing the word. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. They can, they can type the word. They just want the community to do the actual work. We'll see, man. We'll see. But and, yeah, uh, I mean... Sweeney's we're... been avoiding Linux like the plague. So Then we get <laughs> options. Having options, and then it's, uh, you know, monkey circle knives, right? Mm-hmm. From the Simpsons. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> Furious George, what did they do to you? <laughs> Smithers, this monkey's going to need most of your skin. <laughs> <laughs> GDP for the okay. win, part two. Yes. So uh, if uh, you like laptops and you like portable thingies that look like laptops, chances are you've heard of GPD. They released the Pocket not too long ago, and then they released the Pocket 2 very quickly. And But before that, they had actually released the GPD Win, which was a Windows 7 uh, ultra-portable, like, basically Nintendo DS-sized um, gaming PC. 
it it was i mean it, it, it was intel based and it couldn't really play anything at any significant resolution we got a new but, but, picture it, man that looks uh loud yes. <laughs> that, that that honestly looks like the the fans on a switch yeah and uh, yeah. it is probably what they're targeting here is ooh the switch is popular so let's put out another portable gaming thing uh that will be able to run some windows games and they have the um they don't have a specific release date uh they say that it'll come out sometime in 2019 and you know considering the gpd pocket and it had a linux version um on its own and the gpd pocket 2 also had a linux variant so and they delivered on those two so i very much hoping that they will also include perhaps a linux version of the gpd win too pepsi so challenge like pepsi challenge do you think this will actually be out and available to purchase before the smash z yes oh yeah 100%. So like, my, my, I mean, my, my first my first take on this, my my hot take was like, if you ever looked at the Pyra handheld and thought to yourself, man, I need something that will burn my thigh a lot faster while it's sitting in my pocket. Uh, this is the thing for you. Um, although, like much like the PC Gamer article at the top of this segment, no real concrete details on specs. This is all a lot of speculation based on rumors and hearsay. Um, yeah. So don't hold your breath. Super Tux Cart, though, you can you can hold your breath for that. Because, <laughs> oh my god, it's finally happened! Not 10 was... Re- RC1 was released. Now, when you download Super Tux Cart from the main page, you can play it online with your friends. Got one. Took fucking 9,000 years, but the stock <laughs> version of Super Tux Cart can be played over the internet with another human being. Oh my god. That's I so know, lovely. right? Hey, I know. Just- <laughs> They got the, uh, this was like a community made map. The it, it looks better than most of the other ones. Yeah. So. And <laughs> they've included it. It's now part of the official thing. And that's really cool. You know, somebody in the community put together a map and a track for it. And like, yo, man, it's part of the game now. That's got to feel it's, really good for both parties. Need some RTX. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, bo- okay. Speak <laughs> NVIDIA. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my Quake 2? RTX that you were talking about dropping at the end of last month that I still haven't got. Uh, they're probably waiting for Computex too. <laughs> I want, with all the enhancements that you've added, I want to see those 20 frames per second. <laughs> 1080. Uh, I thought it was 45. <laughs> no, 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 baby. That that was like with the original with no high, high-res texture packs or mm-hmm. like glass yeah, reflections. Yeah, NVIDIA, they've got a bunch of mods on it too. <laughs> Yeah, my yeah. my short bus RTX card will literally explode and melt. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> that's why that's why you had to spring for the twenty eighty man. Fuck that. Put it on the wish list. Coming up next, um, we play a crappy mobile game. I'll tell you how it goes. Sell it, baby. <laughs> Welcome back to another wonderful, terrible chair position worthy. A cursed game must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Ubuntu. Then, and only then, can the question be asked. Was it fun? This week we're taking a look at Crashbots. It's from Neon Chimp Games, built on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 10 bucks. What does it take control of the latest line of robots and tests their fighting capabilities, agility, and various endurance in various arenas filled with dangerous obstacles, booby traps, and enemies? Uh, they sent some keys for this on Curator Connect, so thank you very much, Neon Chimp Games. Let's get started, Ben. How, how did how did it play on the on the Ubuntu's? Hey, we gotta play it right, Ben. Um, on eighteen ten, the new hotness, uh, running kernel five, whatever I installed from the main line on the Ryzen 7, 16 gigajoules of RAM, NVMe powered, box of business, uh, twenty sixty, with a video. Um, been a problem with it. I mean, it launched out of the box, which is always good, nice to see, Unity joint and all that. I didn't bother with the resolution because it's kind of a simple game. Looks like a mobile game. We'll talk about that later. It did manage to maintain a solid 60 frames per second at 2160. Graphics, little glitchy as if you're watching the video right there. A little bit of an issue with that. As um, far as controls, I used the Xbox wireless and it worked out of the box. The prompts were correct. I didn't bother to change them, but it comes to find out that wouldn't have been an option in the first place. 
So I'll give it a three cheers, but I'm going to dig it for the glitchy graphics. That's not something I expect to see in 2019. Yeah. Um, so, uh, on Fedora 2864 bit with the SM6700K GTX 1080 Ti, it launches. It performs <laughs> at the one yeah. resolution you get. Uh, graphics wise, yeah, there's some weird texture flickering. And actually, it's actually bad enough that it impacts gameplay. Uh, but we'll mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit later. And controls. Yeah, there's something to be said about the isometric angle here that makes me want to pull down instead of left <laughs> or right. And like, that fucks me up. Also, yeah, there's no real controller options, but um, it did work out of the box with the uh, my newly located DualShock that I don't have to pay eighty dollars for. <laughs> so that that's a pro, I guess. The uh, but again, it's I, I I really wish I wouldn't have to go on Steam Overlay to fix that issue. So I'm gonna dig in a chair for that. So it gets two. Yeah, it's uh. It launches over here in Solus, but the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080, it launches without issue. The performance is also fine, yeah, it seems to be V-syncing to 60. Uh, the graphics, as you can see in the video, there's flickering. I'm not sure if those are textures or tessellation shaders, but whatever it is, it's not working. Uh, the effect that it creates is similar to if you've ever seen like games that have textures that fighting with one another that that's what it is uh the controls where they're not rebindable there's no rebindable controls here it did work out of the box with the dual shock uh and so yeah i guess there's that but yeah it's not rebindable and if you go into the options there are no options for anything. So basically, uh, in order to get the 1080p footage that you're looking at if you're watching the video version, it basically I had to use the KD uh, advanced window features to force it into a 1080p window so that OBS could capture it properly. So it gets two chairs. Basic advanced, man. That's how Pedro rolls. All right, well, <laughs> there you go. Do you have fun playing this game though, Ben? Uh, okay, I got one thing I gotta explain. I see Tannis has posted, hey man, there's an known issue with Unity, so wop wop, known fucking issue that basically a simple fix that they didn't bother to do before they shipped this, but why are we doing such a thing? It's a ten dollar game. And sometimes we gotta try these because you never know. I mean Hollow Knight was a game from a developer we never fucking heard mm -hmm. of. We're like Here's I, the game too. Right then. Mm -hmm. Like, well, let's try it out. And it turned out to be a great game. This one, not so much, but hey, we still had to give it a try. It's kind of like isometric pitfall with achievements. I don't know. You run down that lonely road, you jump, you slide, you pew your way to the end. That's pretty much it. I mean, I, it can get frustrating at times, but, you know, nothing can be overcome. I didn't have any issues with, like, trying to figure out the isometric angles or anything like that. And I was like, oh, I got this. I understand what this is. It's pissing me off. Uh, which is good. I mean, it elicited that emotion. If pissed off is an emotion, is one I'm capable of. And it did get it. But it is, I, I noticed, like, probably five minutes into this, like, this thing is hella achievement focused. 100%. That doesn't work on me at all. I'm about getting shit done. I'm trying to get to the end of the level. If I accomplish that, it's like, give me a bronze. Do I get to the next level? Done. Let's keep going. This was... As it turns out, probably to no one's surprise watching the video, a mobile game. And I do say was, because it's no longer on the Play Store. I couldn't find it on the <laughs> iTunes Store anymore. It's since been removed. Can't say I blame them. Mm, fuck off with your nine ninety nine price tag for your fucking mobile game. Yeah, um... One chair. The, 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 the gameplay here isn't fun. I mean, that that's the long and short of it, right? And I'm honestly not the biggest fan of this Angry Birds type setup. And this game is just that. The rest of it is just like trying to dodge and blast your way through various obstacles, collect coins, and lock other up other levels. Exactly like a mobile game. Oh, so... I did. how many times did you? Was it just me? Did you ever get like caught in a knockback fuck box? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that that yes. happens all the fucking time. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we, uh, we were talking about that uh, in the in between segment. Uh, but yeah, like the obstacles are of varying difficulty, and a lot of a lot of it is just like. Um, you need to understand what the right sequence of events is for the timing to end up right, and you gotta hit all the energy things or you just blow up. And it's not, mm -hmm. like, it's not particularly challenging. It's a lot of process of elimination stuff to sort of understand where the level wants you to ultimately go. 
And that's not really fun. And then there's this issue with the texture flickering where it affects the gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> where um, <laughs> there are panels that will impact how you move. Um, you'll either, it'll either stop you, speed you up, or explode you. And you can't tell where they are. So they'll just be wandering along. And then, blam, you explode because you touched one of those panels. And that's not the sign of a well tested game. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really enjoy. We, we were talking about this as well. This has this game has like a time slowdown effect. Where like you'll play it for a while and be like, "Man, how long was I in there for?" Three, Three minutes. minutes. Oh, right. well. Yeah, when the game elicits that reaction, it can only really get one chair. Yeah, and over here, well, I will often tolerate buggy games. Hell, I finished all of the single player Bethesda games uh, since Morrowind. So there's that. My tolerance for bugs is not the issue. The issue is the amount of bullshit the game throws at you on top of those bugs. It's also a mobile game and it wasn't that long ago that I mentioned my general displeasure for games primarily targeted at phones and tablets. Uh, the biggest gripe I have, much like Ven and Jordan, is that it's frustrating it's it's not fun it's not a fun video game and you want to talk frustration i work as a public servant for the uk government i get plenty of that shit at work i don't need to come home and get more of it so as far as i'm concerned it gets one chair mm. well mm. there there you go that's the chair position for <laughs> crash things bots. for it though man um this is something i definitely brought up before is when your game starts out as mobile, th this looks like, you know, it's an achievement game. It's something's like, ooh, to keep you going, to come back for more, to pick up real quick, you know, like on a mobile. It's like, oh, look, I have three minutes to do something. That's great. But it it, it sticks in the DNA, man. You know, with yep. the fucking achievement, just how it's designed from that doesn't necessarily translate into a good desktop title. Even if you take the achievements out, what was that airplane game we played? They did a decent job with that. Um, oh, I, I know which one you mean, but I can't remember the name. Yeah. So, and here, 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 here's the other thing too, though, is that like you need to get the achievements to get some of the later levels because they require you to unlock. They they require certain amounts of coins to unlock them. So unless unless you're really really good, you're going to be stuck playing the same levels over and over and over again, trying to get all the achievos. Well, well, you you can buy buy some achievement bucks to get to the next. That level. don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh. Mm -mm -mm. All, all right. right, well, all right, that does it for us here. Coming up next, we talk about running games in Proton and Pedro's boops. It's the end of the show. Yep, you made it. If this you watched it all the, the way end. here without using uh, Ven's newfangled timestamps, kudos. I commend you. <laughs> I know. It's a... Uh, it's been a bit, a bit, a bit of a uh, bumpy ride, but hey, if you'd like to let us know what we did wrong, how much you hate me, how much you hate Ven, how much you love Jordan, you can do that. You can go to linuxgamecast.com <laughs> and you make sure LGC Weekly is the thing you're, or the show that you're submitting your hate mail to, and you leave us your name, your email, a subject, and of course, your message. No need to worry about captures. that's all uh, done on Google's end nowadays. They'll figure out whether or not you're actually a robot and fail at it. <laughs> Joke's on you, bro. So, yeah, this week, well, this week, earlier on, I played a little bit of Paladins, mostly, like, last minute thing, because the game I wanted to uh, play didn't work so well with OBS. Fortunately, uh, what he's trying to say is, for, in your benefit, he was unable to play Herbie the Fuckbug. <laughs> no, Wait, it was Har uh, Harvey the crazy Fuckbug? Cup. What? No, Harry the... <laughs> Fallen. There, that's the game I wanted to play, but uh, Arkham, yeah, why, why didn't you hold up a none of it? copy of Arkham Knight? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I ended up doing Paladins, and uh, someone on YouTube decided to leave us a bit of a comment uh, saying, "Did you, did you describe how to get this up and running on Steam? It's still not just click and play like many other titles. And yes, it's not. You need to spool up Proton Tricks." Uh, four 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 zero nine zero dot net forty. That's what you need to do. That's it. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it still needs a little bit of proton tricks because by default, uh, every um, 
Proton Prefix starts up as Windows 7. And in order to install .NET 3.5 and .NET 4.0 afterwards in Wine, you need Windows XP. So basically, when you run Proton Tricks, it grabs the uh, Wine Tricks uh, thing. And the first thing that does is it changes it to Windows XP mode and then runs the installers. Uh, so yeah, basically you need to shift the game to Windows XP mode and then install the .NET, um, redistributables, which that Proton Tricks line that I left in the show notes will do for you automatically. So that's good. <laughs> so nobody play it because Pedro doesn't deserve friends. No, I fucking love it, man. I mean, this is why I love <laughs> editing Pedro's videos because I can cut that into like 18 seconds. Yes. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Part, part, yeah. This, this next one's from um, the Atomic Ass. He says, Wimpy brought this to the Discord's collective attention, but I don't think there has been nearly enough discussion about it. Namely, what kind of bras Pedro wearing? I'm dying to know, as I might be in the market myself. Just saying. Love Pedro's yes. bra. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it is very hard to find something that is both supportive and comfortable for my teeny tiny little man boobs so yeah it's uh where are the best ones atomic apparently they they're the best job as a uh men's ear <laughs> i just do a bunch of what the stuff. hell was this about for um i i speak on behalf of me and the rest of the world i i didn't catch this <laughs> so wimpy found that review on amazon for what uh, <laughs> a, a bra a, 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 <laughs> okay plot thickens and... yes keep, keep, hang on. and hang, guess hang, who hang, else hang, hang uses on, on. my amazon account your bras i don't know who <laughs> brother nori nori wears your bras do they fit <laughs> no I mean, nori I mean, uses I'm... my amazon account and when she saw the well, thing i was like oh leave a review for this item you bought so, well, so, so, she did. So, then, <laughs> okay, then. hang on, hang on, hang so, on. So, no, so, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> let me get this out. Because now I'm genuinely fucking curious. I'm not even joking around. How? Why did you leave it in your name? And how? <laughs> Why did you leave the photo on? <laughs> okay, this. More importantly, how was this brought to Discord's attention? Because Wimpy found it. Okay, Wimp now, Wimp now, now we're getting to it. Wimpy, how the fuck did you find that? What, what were you looking shopping, for? He's obviously. <laughs> Listen, all, all, all I was going to say was that, like, Ben, you and I will forever have this problem. We can't share clothes with our girlfriends because no. we will never be their size. Ever. No. Ever. Ever. <laughs> so. pa but yeah, Pedro, no, on the other uh, hand. I mentioned it to Nori. It's like, look, see, this is what you've done. It's just like, oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't, didn't just laugh in your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's the one who uses my account. I told her that she could make her own, but no, she uses mine, so there. <laughs> okay, so the moral of the story is Discord, Chat Realm, whomever, if you can find more embarrassing product reviews from Pedro Matesa's Amazon account, please send them via hate mail. And we'll you we'll could just go to my it. Amazon profile. <laughs> Right. I don't want to do that. I'm I'm making these people do it, Pedro, because that's their job, not my job. My job is to roast you based on your Amazon reviews. I don't have to go look for them. They'll bring them to me. This show's been tits. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, because on that bombshell. Let's cue that news. You could always find us nonsense around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where we show up for the live stream an hour before that for patrons to hop in discord and uh we do the pre pre super search. so that's like where we plan and pretend to know what the hell we're doing because we don't if you want to get in touch with me i'm at vince stone on twitter because google plus is dead man so is the geo.gl why'd you kill that too google dicks and uh i'm on mastodon mass.linuxgamecast.com at vin they killed their url sir shortener really yeah that was Damn. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, it's dead, dead now. It used to be where you couldn't sign up to use it, but even us, those who had Ugh. it. Yeah. And, and anyways, I'm I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me not posting stuff on social media because I don't want the government to know what I'm doing, which is mostly just sitting in my room and jerking off. Uh, you can find that <laughs> silence at the Burning Fool on Twitter or at on our Mastodon at Frojo. Mm -hmm. But, but, uh, but, but soon you'll be doing it central heating in air. I will. I'll I'll be the cool. I'll be the coolest guy ever. 
<laughs> and I'm not the coolest guy ever. Apparently, I wear bras on the internet. So you can find me at an accounted for on Twitter, which you will not find a picture of me wearing a bra just yet. It may come in future. <laughs> oh, the huge memories. <laughs> Pedro, show some cleavage. Yeah, get, us off, get, us, get, get us kicked right off Twitch, man. Show some boobs. <laughs> show bobs. No bobs for you today. Oh, no bobs. Show bobs. With a baboon. Executive. The bosses. <laughs> we are Theater and Foxy. MD. Matabi. Mike G. Barbara. Trump 7. Aldius. Really? Mike Opium. G? I've been calling him Mike Egg the G. entire time. That's because you're <laughs> non-functional. <laughs> you're development developmentally disabled, is it? I am. What's way? your point? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss. Yeah. Heinz Cranch, though. Fucking ketchup and oh ranch yeah, did mixed you uh, add a haplo to the fuckos? Uh, oh, we gotta start over. Uh, <laughs> we're about to find out. <laughs> Thanks to the post. And wait, uh, 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 there it is. Haplo, haplo, <laughs> he's there. Look at him. Nailed it. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh, we're we're, we're professionals. No. Uh, it's all burning. <laughs> Now we, we get to start over. And welcome back to another episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly. Time to fire everyone. Bye. Peace. <laughs> okay. Five dudes.